Hello everyone, once again welcome back to Server Gyan. My name is Dr. Lokhyandra Singh and today we are going to discuss something about disaster recovery. This is really going to be important thing. With those guys who are working with within IT and they need to ensure that yes, their site has to be up and running all the time. Then DR, it means disaster recovery drill becomes very important part of their activity. Moreover, what to do, what not to do, how to prepare list of uh, things which you need to perform during DR, DR site planning, we are going to discuss. So, uh, like usually during interview people can ask, okay, what are the key points to consider before initiating a DR drill? So when we are talking about DR drills, so first of all, let us try to understand that what are the plans we do we have. So as per AWS, let me tell you and most of other organizations and across are also following the same way. Like there are two type of stuff which we have. Like first of all, it's known as active passive. Like first of all, you will take backup of, of all the applications, database, uh, so like code, everything you will backup. And when disaster happens, disaster takes place, then you will start to restore it. That particular thing is known as, that particular methodology is known as backup and restore. Now there are two major points which we need to consider, like why we are planning all these things. First of all, RTO and RPO. RTO stands for recovery point objective. Then after, RTO stands for recovery time objective. Recovery point objective means, let us say, today at 10.48, which is the current uh, IST time right now. So if this time the site goes down and we are going to take, let us say 10 hours to restore our services. So 10 hours is going to be RTO, recovery time objective. Once we will be in position to say that, yes, we have restored everything back to normal. So that 10 hours time, which we are going to take, that will be considered as RTO, recovery time objective. Now what is RPO? So the particular moment, when the site will be up and running, how much amount of data we would have lost by the time of restore because when we take backup, so what is frequency of taking backup? Then how soon we can take the backup to disaster recovery site? Then after how long will it take to copy that to servers? How long will it take to spin the servers once again when the disaster takes place? So that way, so RTO and RPO, these are Two key, two key points while setting up your disaster recovery site. R, once again, I'll tell you, RPO means recovery point objective, RTO means recovery time objective in ours. Okay, what are the advantage, disadvantage, like uh, in which particular use case, which particular section like backup and restore, pilot light, warm standby, multi-site or active active, you can call that. So low priority use cases. So it is not mandatory that we are going to have multi-site for everything, but yes. Those use cases where we feel that uh, these are going to be less business impacting, very less amount of less volume of users are going to be impacted if this, if this goes down, this is less revenue generating application. So we can think of backup and restore. Provision all AWS at the time of event happens, like whenever there is a particular event taking place, post confirmation that yes, the site is down right now, nothing is working, then we uh, go for backup and restore. Cost of backup and restore are really less. But guys, if you see, so cost and RTO, RPO are proportional, like if cost is low, then these are going to be really high. Okay. The second way of active passive is known as pilot light. What does that mean? Like tens of minutes. What is going to be RTO uh, over here? Like tens of minutes, maybe 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an, an hour or so. Like, below, uh, like uh, within less than an hour, we shall be able to restore our services. So uh, what, what happens here like data remains live because rather than keeping our, all the applications into our, our DR site, we provision all the applications, we put them in a stopped state, maybe once in a day or maybe once in a week, we can sync up the particular code to, in our remote location. Whenever there's a deployment going on, we keep on updating AMIs and all. So uh, at the time of disaster, we shall be able to spin up the applications with predefined set of codes. Okay, then after, services are ideal over here, provision some AWS resources in advance, and scale after event cost will be high. Then after we have warm standby, so we need to set up always running application. Like 
some of the applications which are really critical these will be up and running all the time but obviously whenever the particular disaster takes place we will just scale them up cost will be more higher when we talk about multi sites where the name suggests it is going to be active active we will have to keep all the sites all the applications in dc and dr dc means data center dr means disaster recovery site so we will have to keep all the applications up and running all the time if we are going to do in such a manner then we shall be able to understand like what is backup and restore multi site uh, like what is uh, multi backup restore pilot light warm standby multi site or you can call it active active as well so we need to be careful while uh, replying these things moreover like a person during interview may ask you okay who decides that the, what kind of backup strategy so guys this is risk man risk team your management team security team compliance team moreover multiple regulatory guidelines are there regulatory authorities are there who will uh, let you know the particular requirement to keep your infrastructure up and running there will be multiple slas if you are running site for some customer so based on those particular parameter this is decided whether what kind of infrastructure we are going to set up for performing dc and dr okay now uh, when we talk about a disaster recovery checklist like what are the particular key points we need to think of and uh, one more thing is here which i would like to tell you like uh, what sort of list we need to have the kind of list which we need to have before performing the particular dcdr so the very first thing which we need to have like list of like inventory list of critical production systems that are necessary to conduct business there could be multiple applications which you are running but let us say out of 10 three are major one and out of those three as well so what is the ma main application which is impacting the business directly and the in uh, like uh, what which is most revenue generating application so based on the particular for example if your entire data center goes down then you need to have a particular priority that which application to restore first then after there should be a particular backup policy like uh, you can take uh, you can have live backup you can have like offline backup maybe within same data center maybe within different data center so there has to be retention policy retention policy of backup like for how long you are going to keep the backup available with you there are two kind of backups which can be there like first of all it can be online backup like all the servers are connected from one another or it could be offsite backup for example we do not want to have any sort of connectivity with internet why it is so let us say if there is some ransomware attack which takes place and all the data goes down corrupt uh, like uh, the particular attacker is demanding for high amount of uh, like ransom in order to release the data in order to like decrypt the data so in that case what happens we need to take a backup in some offline mode where no internet connectivity is there it means data corruption chances are zero then after we need to have the particular security of offsite data center where the particular tape drives are kept moreover we need to ensure that let us say at the time of disaster how long will it take to send the particular tape drives on which we have taken backup to the particular dr site like the time taken in order to ship your backup to your dr site moreover we need to have handy the particular steps to restore the servers like what are the steps going to be there what server is connecting with what other server how many vms are required what is the connectivity required what are the username and password when it was it was reset last so that kind of information you guys need to have handy moreover when we talk about this particular kind of stuff so we need to know about like sequence of re uh, restoring applications like uh, first of all whether we need to bring a web server application server database server then what server has to be has, has to be prioritized in order to go for restoration so that that list should also be available with you guys in advance then after soft, software repositories that these should be backed up properly your os images with all the applications and software installed in it that has to be like uh, managed in a proper way moreover restore mainframes along with their backups now what does that mean mainframe so all as i told you like if there are 10 applications out of which three are really critical and which one to restore first so we need to restore the application and as soon as the application goes live so obviously there will be some customer data coming in 
So we need to ensure backup of those applications as well. As soon as these are live, so we need to ensure that they're real-time backup or maybe like whatever is the policy of your organization is. So backup has to be enabled for those enabled applications which are not currently running with your DR site, disaster recovery site. Now private branch exchange, let us say if there are multiple offices are there, so you need to establish the connection as people should be able to reach out to that. Moreover, we need to ensure that uh, while provisioning local area networks, which are known as LANs, so these are isolated and whenever both the sites like DC and DR both are up and we need to sync the data from DC to DR and DR to DC. So these should be, av these should be available on like, like different network as some network connectivity can be established. Moreover, your monitoring has to be really uh, strong. So as soon as you guys go live in DR, uh, it could be possible like some uh, some certain security parameters are there which are not uh, implemented in advance or well implemented so as soon as you guys go live so you guys need to identify that yes we have preventive monitoring we have reactive monitoring so if anything which is suspicious takes place so we shall be able to identify that and block the users then after like uh, what are the secondary resources how we are going to send communication what are the particular mail servers do we have like a monitoring engine available in the dr site or not let us say once the site is live but due to high load or maybe due to some unforeseen reason site goes down once again so do we have like um, emailing services enabled do we have monitoring service enabled what are the different alternative uh, email communication uh, email or sms communication we can have in order to ensure that everything is up and running then after user testing of the new DR environments, so as soon as new, new environment goes live, so we need to test with real user and some users from in, in like uh, in-house as, as well. Validate the data of re, like restored. So validity has to be there. Like if there was some n number of records, n number of customers were there, uh, there all the details were stored in DC like data center. Now when we restore the particular stuff into DR, so we need to validate the data as well. Employee training for DR practices is, is a must like whenever we are going to do DR so first of all there has to be a particular document published while you guys are going for approval and all so at that moment this particular thing has to be ensured. Secure offsite location so whenever you guys have taken backup of your data into some uh, like offsite location so we need to ensure that yes these things are going to be quite secure. So that is, this is a particular list of invent, like list of document which we need to have before initiating DC and DR. Uh, going like with the next video, we shall be discussing like uh, what are the like impact of it, how do we plan for it, and all. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good time. Happy learning.